on Saturday where all eight all the eight seeds won. So we got one one verse eight, two verse seven, three verse six, four verse five. Uh, NDSU took care of business on Montana. It was a dominating running game, 453 rushing yards. They had runs of two runs of 68 yards, a 75-yard run, and a 73-yard run. Game really flipped. It was kind of hanging in the balance. But uh, Cole Wisniewski had a fumble recovery in the end zone right before half that gave them a touchdown lead. And then after that, uh, pick six by the – by the Grizzlies to start the second half. After that, it was all buys, and that was when the runs broke out. Montana got a late touchdown with like 30 seconds left, but very mm-hmm. similar to how most Grizz games have played out this year, whether uh, like against Montana State, where NDSU just ran all over them. They really had no shot, and it was a good win, and they move on to Sanford, where they – uh they play on Friday at five Mountain Time on ESPN two. Oh, not not the normal Saturday game. No, no, that is uh, reserved for South Dakota State. Actually, they'll be playing uh, Holy Cross at at uh, ten on ESPN. Interesting. So, yep, yep. There's yeah, there's and then Montana State plays right after the NDSU game on Friday, but India or we'll we're gonna play play a game, guys of. No, get to know your opponent. Okay, so they play Samford, Samford University. Do you guys know what state Samford is in? Connecticut. Nope. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Georgia. Close, Grant. Alabama. They, they are in Homewood, Alabama. Ah, my, South Carolina was my next guess. It was founded as Howard College by Baptists. In 1841, hmm. there. Let's see. Uh, let's see if you guys know any. There, there's a few, few famous alumni they have here. Uh, one of them is a quarterback. He played for the Steelers, and he won the Walter Payton Award, and actually beat out a former Bison for it that year as well. Do you guys know who that is? Charlie Batch. Nope. Hmm. Ethan? Um Steeler quarterback. Terry Bradshaw, I don't know. Nope. It is the the one and only Devlin Duck Hodges. Oh, oh. the duck. Yeah. The duck. Yep. And then a couple other ones here. This guy is most known for he was a Titans cornerback. Who got into a fist fight against Andre Johnson? Finnegan, Cortland Finnegan. Yeah, Cortland, hey, Cortland. there it yeah. is. Oh, yeah. Finnegan. And I got, there's two more. This guy, he is a national champion, head coach, and on the golf course is known to lay up on par fives. Jimbo Fisher. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I hate that guy. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. And then, uh, so the last question is, this guy, he is a legendary football coach. He is, he is, he hails from Birmingham, Alabama. Um, he recently passed away. He, he is uh, the last, he coached at one place for 33 years. I think I know this. And before that, he was the head coach at West Virginia. I think I know this. Go ahead. Bobby Bell. Yep. Yep. Bobby Woo! Bell. Which is actually, I believe, the stadium is named after Bobby Bowden. I want to say it is Bobby Bowden Stadium. At Sanford? Yep. Okay, because I know it's Bobby Bowden Field there in Tallahassee. Yes, I want to say it is Bobby Bowden Stadium. Hey, hmm. three for five on my Sanford. Yeah, um, yeah I'm feeling I'm feeling Not pretty terrible. good after that. So, do you guys know who Devlin Duck Hodges beat out for the Walter Payton Award? Trey Lance? Jimmy Garoppolo. Nope. No, uh, Easton Stick. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
So, but yeah, Samford, <laughs> as far as uh, you guys know anything about the uh, current Samford, Samford team? Are they the bull, they are, they the bull, are they the Bulldogs by seeing their logo? I believe, yeah, I think so. That's that's about as much as I got. They they are the Bulldogs. They are from the Southern Conference, but don't worry, I've I've got I've got some stuff here. I watched Matt Entz's press conference today. They're their team that they they like to throw the ball around. Um, they're a no huddle team. They they their goal is to get a hundred plays a game in on offense. Good They've luck got, communicating. It never in works that. for Sunday SU. Good Ever. luck communicating in that dome. Yes, which I, I mean, Matt Matt Entz was pleading for. Uh, hopefully, they're going to be able to fill it. Uh, they they had about thirteen thousand people there on for the game on Saturday, which is about seventy percent of the dome. I I think with it being a Friday game, I think there's a little bit more pull. It's a night game. You know, hey, we can take off work early, go tailgate. You know, gives people a little bit more excitement, you know, get going over there, which 13,000 for a playoff game, it's kind of been the norm outside of the quarterfinals. Hopefully this does a little bit of added juice to it, um, which is even though 13,000 compared to the rest of the attendance for the FCS is, it, they oh, NDSU fantastic. dom because even like South Dakota State they didn't even fill half of it up this weekend. You're telling me the the Delaware Blue Hens didn't get people in Brookings excited to go watch football? Did not. Six, oh, I that's... think it was like sixty one hundred people there. That's ridiculous. Yeah, Delivering shit out of them. Yeah. Yeah, it was over. It was over fast. But they've they've got two Sam back to Sanford. They got two receivers that are shy of a thousand yards. Their quarterback, it sounds like he actually got hurt against, I can't remember who they were playing. I think it was Southeast Louisiana. But, um, you know, they're this, and they're not they're just kind of, he's questionable, it sounds like, but he's thrown for over 3,300 yards, 35 touchdowns, three interceptions. Uh, the backup, it sounds like he's more of a runner. As far as for NDSU on the defensive side is – you know, anytime you're playing a team that likes to go fast, likes to try to get to that hundred play mark, is biggest thing is is winning first and second down, getting into those obvious pass passing situations where the pass rush for the Bison can just tee off and force force some havoc, cause cause force them into a bad throw, and then limit limit those explosive plays. And on the offensive side is just play really good complimentary football, which I don't think they should have a problem with doing. Sanford's defense is not very good. They give up a lot of yards rushing, which is not good if you're playing a Bison team because mm-hmm. they're, they're going to run the ball. They're going to hold the ball for – if they can, they'll they'll go four yards a play. They, they're not going to shy away from it. If it's working, they're going to stick with it. So – I think the line right now, it start, opened at 12 and a half this morning. And when I looked before we started recording was 16 and a half already. I think you might even want to go higher. Well, yeah, yeah like because like, literally everything you just said, Dylan, to describe this game is a recipe for a 42 to 3 Bison blowout. A team who likes to go fast, no huddle. Uh, their quarterbacks hurt. They can't communicate in the dome. They give up a lot, a lot of yards rushing on the ground. We we we've seen this before, and 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 it and it gets pretty ugly. They're they're in the Fargo dome. It it gets ugly. So hopefully Stanford um, and knows half of what they're getting into. I doubt they will. Who who knows? Uh, the, some of the hospitals there and. Um, you know, the Sanford Hospital out there in Fargo might want to have a couple body bags ready for that Sanford defense because they might not be ready for this running game that's coming their way. No, and they, they seem to be clicking right now. Um, today it sounds like Lipke is done for the year, so he won't be back. But uh, Tameric Williams and Kobe Johnson seem to really be coming into their own and really mm-hmm. carrying that load. Cole Payton mm-hmm. is going to be, I think, Cam Miller. He was one of the – he had one of the 68-yard runs against Montana. He's a, he's going to be a threat in the running game as well, and just like I said, just complimentary football. Keep that defense off the field. Don't let that offense 
get going and they should be playing in the semis again. And it could be at home depending on if Sac State does. Even if they don't, I still feel confident with them even going out, out on the road. You know, kind of selfishly, I'm looking I'm looking into January here, but I hope it's an NDSU SDSU championship game. I, I, I just I think the FCS they need that just to promote the game and to promote the teams playing in this league. You have the two best teams. You know, people they'll remember SDSU, the team who lost to Iowa seven to three this year. Uh, you know, who, who their defense really only gave up three points. You have the rivalry. How many championships NDSU's won over these last couple of years? I know I'm looking ahead here, uh, but we're playing the hypothetical game. Um, we're I'm hoping it's Jack Spies and Aaron Frisco this year. Me too. I think I think a lot of NDSU people would be very, very uh, rubbing their hands together with uh, excitement after the uh, them leaving the Fargo Dome with the Rock, and I think NDSU would get a little bit of. Actually, not just a little bit. They they get a lot of justice and the last laugh if they're holding up the national championship trophy in Frisco again. Oh, without question. 